Ian Crawford is Professor of Planetary Science and Astrobiology at Birkbeck University of London. Um, Ian, welcome. For those of us who are not distinguished professors, I mean, just how important is China's mission to the far side of the Moon? Well, well, good afternoon. Uh, this is fantastically important for lunar science. Of course, it's a tremendous technical achievement for uh, China's space program as well. Um, as your piece indicated, currently no samples have ever been returned from the far side of the Moon yet. And uh, these, these are the first. And we know the far side of the Moon is geologically different from the near side. And these samples are likely to be key to, to helping us understand that difference. So what is expected to be found out from the samples? What are you hoping to learn? Well, there are several, there are several things, as, as you might expect. The, the top-level thing is, is, as I've just indicated, that the geological evolution of the far side of the Moon is different from the near side, where all previous samples have come from. Understanding that difference will help us understand the origin of the Moon. But since the origin of the Moon was tied up with the early history of the Earth, it, it, it will help inform our understanding of the origin of the Earth-Moon system itself. I think that's the top-level thing. I mean, there are a number of other specialised, um, more specialised scientific questions that I can discuss if you like. But I think that there's just pinning down this fundamental difference between the near and far sides of the Moon and what it tells us about the origin and early history of the Earth-Moon system. This is, the, this is the most important thing. And at the risk of sounding like uh, one of your rather more dim undergraduates, um, why are the near and far sides of the Moon so different from each other? Well, that, that's what we're trying to find out. I mean, this is a long-standing mystery in planetary science. Um, and because all of our samples currently have come from the near side, it's, it's been difficult to really get a handle on this question because we haven't had any rock samples from the far side. So, so this really, I mean, that's a question we'd hope to be able to answer once uh, we've um, been able to study these samples. And what do we know about the lunar South Pole? Why are scientists like you so fascinated by it? Well, th this mission didn't go to the lunar South Pole. I think it's important to make that point. It went to the far side, but it didn't go to the South Pole. Um, nevertheless, the South Pole is of great scientific importance. It, we, we haven't visited the South or the North Poles of the Moon either. Those are still unexplored parts of the Moon. Um, uh, the South Pole of the Moon contains a, um, a number of uh, craters which never see the sun, so-called permanently shadowed craters. And we believe that ice will collect in these permanently shadowed craters and studying water ice, studying water ice, which has probably been delivered to the moon from comets early in the history of the solar system, this will inform our understanding of how water and volatile materials were delivered to the early Earth as well as to the early moon early in the history of the solar system. So, so the South Pole is of great scientific in interest, but it, it, it's important to stress that Chang'e 6 didn't go to the South Pole. It went to the far side. Ian, good to talk to you. Thanks so much for your time. Ian Crawford, Professor of Planetary Science at Birkbeck in London.